My name is Andre and I'm a solution engineer at PDFtron. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to embed PDF viewing and editing inside of Salesforce uh, as a Salesforce Lighting Web component. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so first things first to kind of get started with the PDFtron SDK inside Salesforce um, uh, Lightning Web component, we ha actually have prepared a number of guides to help you out. So if you just head on over to pdftron.com uh, under documentation web, let's go ahead and jump into the overview. So inside of overview, um, as you can see, there is a number of different guides available for you to kind of customize the behavior uh, and make it work exactly the way you need it. However, we're going to go ahead and kind of get started. Um, we can integrate a number of different frameworks. Uh, I'll make videos for that as well. I'll make a video for React, uh, Vue, and Angular, any other ones. Uh, just go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, Okay, so we're gonna go and uh, click Salesforce for integration. Okay, perfect. So here, you know, some of the prerequisites, I'm just gonna assume that, you know, since you're developing for the Salesforce platform, uh, you already kind of have it configured. So as such, I'm just gonna skip Salesforce CLI, but if not, just go ahead and kind of download there. Um, Node and NPM, yep, just go ahead and download and install it. And um, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and download the Salesforce sample source code. So let's go ahead and pop it out in a new tab. Um, so this is kind of a GitHub repository. We actually provide, you know, all of the code that what's happening inside of the Lightning Web component. Uh, so you can just kind of go ahead and clone it or just download zip. I don't download zip myself. And then download the latest version of Web here. Okay, great. So after you've done those two steps, um, it should appear something like this uh, inside of um, inside of your folder. So next, we're gonna go ahead and uh, yeah, extract uh, webyear.zip. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Sweet. And let's open it up in terminal. Uh, so just kind of navigate it uh, from. Uh, wherever you are to where you download it. So I put it under documents, um, Salesforce webinar, and web here. Okay. And the next thing we're gonna do is just kind of run this script right here. So let's go ahead and run it. So npm run optimize. So we'll do, it will download any required dependencies for you. And then it's gonna run us through the questionnaire that will prepare a web viewer SDK to be deployed uh, on Salesforce. Uh, so first things first, it asks you whether or not you wanna back up your files before optimizing it. So here we're just gonna say no, because you know, you download this uh, zip, you can re-download it or just uncompress it again if something goes wrong during the steps. Okay, uh, whether or not we're gonna be using web viewer server now, Lightning Web Component is, you know, uh, com runs completely client side, and so does Web Viewer SDK. Uh, so we are not going to be using any server side um, kind of rendering. So we're just going to hit no to that. And Zod is a kind of PDF Trans proprietary format. It's great uh, for kind of older browsers, um, as well as kind of just another level of encryption to your documents. So I'm going to say no. Uh, do we need client-side office support? I'll hit yes. And whether or not I need full API. Um, you know, this guide right here, there's a link that kind of goes through and discusses of uh, what full API is required. For this guide, I'm just going to say yes. And the reason being, because I want to enable redaction um, inside my Salesforce Lightning Web component. So redaction is a way of removing, you know, any sensitive information from the document like text images. So I'm gonna say yes to the full API. And I wanna use the production version of pdfnet.js. Uh, it's a little lighter, um, so we we'll wouldn't just push it to the Salesforce. And then the last question, the most important question is whether or not we wanna deploy to Salesforce. So I'm just going to say yes to that one because that's what we want. And yeah, it looks good to me. So now we'll prepare a special build of WebViewers Decay uh, specifically for Salesforce. 
So let's go ahead and um, navigate and just kind of see what it built. Okay, great. So just just like the terminal kind of showing us here, it, it created uh, compressed resources uh, that we'll need for our LWC. Great, so we completed step one, uh, step two, and step three. All right, so now we're gonna do um, cloning the web viewer Salesforce sample. Uh, so we've already done that because we just downloaded the code as you've seen here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and unzip it. Uh, let's actually go back and unzip it here, perfect. So the next step is going to be copying the resources, um, you know, inside of kind of WebViewer SDK, WebViewer.zip, into our uh, LWC project. So let's go ahead and do that. And we just need uh, the zips. Uh, we don't need to copy the folders. So just select those. Great. Copy. And let's move them to WebViewer Salesforce Master. So those I gotta put under uh, force up slash main default static resource path right here. Okay, so let's do that. And we're just gonna place it here. Now, really important step right here is to make sure that uh, the XML resource meta actually matches the file that we're trying to uh, place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, kind of rename the lean one. The lean one, it would be if we said no to the full API, uh, we wouldn't have to rename anything, but uh, because we want the full API, then um, we've got to rename this. So, and I'm just going to go ahead and say full here. Okay, so it's great. So now we can see that we were named and uh, the resource meta.xml matches the resource uh, that we're actually trying to upload. Uh, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this inside our Visual Studio uh, Code Editor. So I'm just gonna open ahead a new window. Um, and for it, I'm just gonna open our project located where we downloaded it and unzipped it. Okay, great. So here there's you know a few key classes or um, not classes, but JavaScript files that we have to take a look at. So it's webviewer.js and uh, config.js. Um, and as we can see, the resources that are here as well that we've downloaded. So this right here is kind of like uncompressed Lightning Web Component. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and package it and send it up to Salesforce. Now with this step right here, uh, we need to go ahead and kind of uh, log in with, um, you know, if it's our first time, we gotta go ahead and kind of link our Scratch uh, org or Salesforce development uh, account uh, with the machine that we're using and I'm gonna be pushing step two. Um, so I've already done that, but go ahead and run this command and it will just open up the browser where you can just go ahead and log in uh, with your Salesforce uh, developer account. Okay, and then inside of it, uh, it's important to make sure that uh, you enable DevHub now, enabling DevHub, uh, you can do so in your kind of developer edition. Um, however, you know, uh, I've read up about it and it says it's safe to do so in production as well. Uh, and it doesn't affect the performance or your customer information. So if you kind of need to debug, uh, you can do so. But, you know, once you're kind of customized the Lightning Web component and it's ready to go, you don't actually need to have DevHub enabled the whole time. So just kind of only for pushing that package up. Okay, uh, so if you know, you're know you unfamiliar where to find the dev hub, uh, and I got confused last time on the webinar that I was running. So it was on this screen right here, kind of like in the actual uh, simulated environment. So just go ahead and go under setup uh, for the current app. And then under setup, you can navigate and search for dev hub right here. And then just make sure it's enabled. So as you can see, mine is enabled. Okay, after you successfully logged in and linked uh, your Salesforce CLI to um, your uh, Salesforce developer account, uh, let's go ahead and create the Scratch org. Uh, so it's this step eight. Uh, let's go ahead and copy. Okay, 
so here, you know, um, we're just kind of creating a default one. Uh, you can configure uh, the scratch org settings by project scrap dev.json right here by editing under config. Um, so this command will take a little bit of time to execute. And let's see once. Okay, perfect. So we successfully created a new scratch org uh, with a username. Uh, so, and as you can see here, if you downloaded the VS Code Salesforce extension, that it automatically linked up to it. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and push this Lightning Web component uh, that we put together with the newest version of WebViewer uh, to the Salesforce. Now, uh, this command is going to take a little bit of time to kind of get started uh, with, just because I actually have to upload all of the kind of project configuration as well as the resources. Now, you know, if we do kind of encounter any errors of this step right here, most likely they have to do with not properly naming uh, the resource and the resource meta. So you can quickly fix that and kind of try it again. And then, you know, just to give you a little bit of background information is that there's tons of different JavaScript as the case out there. Um, however, you know, at PDFtron, we uh, use our own proprietary rendering engine that we've been kind of developing for the last 20 years. And since we have kind of full control over the code, we're able to break it up into kind of chunks because Salesforce actually has a limitation on the static resources that they only allow it up to five megabytes. So we're able to grab our library and kind of break it up into the resources uh, necessary. Okay, so I'm just gonna fast forward the video a little bit here. Oh, actually, never mind, no need for that. Uh, so, okay, it looks like everything got added. So at this point, uh, we just need to tweak a few things. Remember in the step we actually said we want to have full API set to true. So in inside webview.js, um, we can go ahead and change the variable for full API to true. Again, if you're just using the standard uh, version, just the lean API, you don't have to do any of those steps. So let's go ahead and save here. And let's say we want to enable redactions. Uh, we can actually uh, provide the constructor option and say to true. Now, this is the web viewer kind of constructor here. And you can actually refer to our documentation how to do that. So for example, the way I enabled uh, the reduction, how I knew where to find it, if you go back to our guides and for example, look under redaction and hit setup. So here we need full API to true as we did in the previous step and enable redaction to true uh, as well. And again, there's guide for pretty much anything. Uh, so kind of go ahead, go through, see what needs to be configured or done. Okay, so back in our VS code, uh, we set the reduction to true. Uh, full API is pointing to kind of this variable right here, which is above is set to true. Okay, great. So now we're gonna go ahead and push one more time. Uh, this time around, it's not actually uploading all the resources and just kind of updating um, that specific file that we just modified, which is WebViewer.js. Great, and Let's go ahead and uh, open our scratch org. Now to open the scratch org, I, you know, I, I always forget this command, but if you just go back to the Salesforce guide, it's available right here. Uh, we can just copy it and go back in our VS code and paste it in. Okay, and now this is our first time loading of the scratch org. So let's see, it opens up, great. And we can actually kind of navigate under, uh, let's follow the permissions. Let's navigate under app. Oh, and here's our Lightning Web component that we put together, it's PDFtron. You can customize this, we, you know, this is just a sample, but you can really kind of customize it in any way you want. So we just kind of use the default file controller to interact uh, with the web viewer. Uh, you can actually upload files or kind of open the files directly from Salesforce Apex records. Again, I'll probably save it for another video, but if you are kind of curious, you can kind of go through 
and read this guide right here, Salesforce Apex, how to open files um, from the Salesforce. Um, okay, so inside here, as you can see, now we have our PDF uh, viewing. I can open files, I can view them, I can annotate and markup, and I can kind of add comments. You know, I can say, hello, post it, set the statuses. Um, I'm able to also manipulate pages, so I can kind of rotate them in place, can drag and drop, um, can delete pages. Um, this also allows us to open Microsoft Office documents and images. Uh, we can add different shapes, uh, we can insert signatures, uh, we can do stamps. Um, so for example, Custom Stamp Designer is one of my favorite tools of web here, is I can say my awesome stamp, just kind of go ahead and stamp it anywhere I want on the page and I can keep reusing the same stamp. And then when editing, uh, this is what I was referring to where we can actually uh, do redactions. So for example, let's say I wanted to go ahead and um, just redact away this uh, word right here. Um, so this comes in really handy if we have any personally identifiable information like phone numbers, social security uh, numbers, um, addresses, names, and uh, yeah, we want to kind of remove it from the document. So I hit apply and what will this do, not just kind of place a black box uh, on top of it, but actually uh, just completely kind of remove it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm actually going to be posting more videos how to integrate, um, you know, PDF editing capabilities inside of React, uh, Angular and Vue. Uh, so if you want to kind of stay tuned and kind of see what else is new from PDFtron, go ahead and subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this.